Hey, uh, my name's Elliot Hughes. I've worked on Android for a while now. And actually, my first job on Android was uh, working on the Java core libraries and actually cleaning up some of the bugs in our JNI. Um, so first off, I'll show you uh, what you're probably expecting to see when you think JNI, which is code that looks like this. Um, and I, I'm guessing no one can tell that the code that actually does anything useful isn't on that screen yet. And I'm guessing that no one can tell me within five seconds where the useful line in that either is. So like this, this, is, this talk is basically how to not do that. How do we get away from that? Uh, and the, the one line answer is use C++ better. Um, if, you, uh, if, you, if you're using the C APIs, uh, which is what most people do, um, it's really tricky. You end up with the sort of go-to fail style, or you have the sort of nested if style that we had there. Um, and there are a lot of special cases as well, like, you know, I'm trying to throw an exception, but there's already an exception pending. What do I do there? How do I chain that to be uh, the cause of the previous exception? So don't write that in every single JNI method. Write that once. Uh, and in particular, have classes that let you uh, use a string as a string, like you know, use a J string as if it's a, a stud string. Uh, similar for arrays, you don't want to be having to deal with like a J byte array when you could just use operator square brackets to just use it like a normal array. Um, local references too, and there's, there's, a, there's a long list of other things, but the strings and primitive arrays, uh, I think, are the two major ones. Most of the benefit you get is from that. Um, exceptions, harder than they look, and the, the sort of raw primitives you get in JNI are not super useful. Um, the, they expect you to find the class yourself. They expect you to create an instance. Uh, if, you, if you want to uh, actually include a proper detail message or a, or a cause, you end up doing weird things like, uh, you know, I need to find the constructor for, my, for this exception, and then I need to uh, invoke the constructor, blah, blah, blah. It's a lot of code, especially if you deal with the special cases. So having a function that just takes a printf style format string is a huge relief. Um, and uh, Right. Uh, so I've been talking about this kind of in the abstract. I've been saying you should do these things. Um, there are many choices that you can use for this. Uh, and I think w a problem a lot of people have is they get hung up on, like, what's the exact perfect way to do this? What's the best? It doesn't matter. Any of these are better than writing the kind of code that we saw on the first couple of slides. Android itself uses libnative helper, which you can find in AOSP. It's in the root directory. Uh, there's a bunch of header-only stuff for doing the things that I've been talking about. Um, or if you don't like any of the others on the internet, you can just write your own. They're, they're really not that hard. So what does it look like if you actually do switch to using something like this? This is the same code. This is the same two slides that we had before, uh, now condensed to one. I think five seconds is plenty of time for you to actually see uh, which is the line that actually does the work there. Um, you can make this shorter. Um, you don't actually need to have the style where we, we have the uh, constructors and then we check, like, did that actually work? Um, if you're prepared to use C++ exceptions and do some kind of transformation. But that's kind of a more advanced topic. I think this gets you 90% of the benefit for like 20% of the effort. So this, this, is, this is what Android does internally. This is actually what the code looks like in Android for that call. Um, so uh, that was a really simple thing where there really was just one line of active ingredient in there. But this scales really well. Uh, and our recommendation is that you actually you, you try to keep your code like that. So don't mix all the JNI boilerplate stuff in with your actual code. Keep those separate in the same way that you wouldn't, you know, if on the other end of the spectrum, if you, you wouldn't sort of mix your, your business logic and your UI rendering stuff. Down here, it's, it's similar sort of advice. Don't do that. Um, uh, and it, again, if you want a, a good example of this, the Android System OS class is implemented things exactly this way, that the, the implementation is super repetitive, really boring, and that's the way we like it. It's hard to make mistakes. Um, I'm running out of time, so I'll just go through this very quickly. If, you're, if you need to um, worry about old Android releases uh, and you have multiple SO files, that can get very tricky. We recommend that you consider the Relinker project. Uh, you can find that on GitHub. Um, the storing SO files uncompressed, that was mentioned earlier in the keynote. Uh, one big library is generally better than lots of small libraries. Um, thank you. Uh, if you have questions, uh, come and find me. I'll be, in, I'll be doing open hours all afternoon. So thank you. Thank you.